everyone, this is Dr. Charles C. Lucas. I am the very excited senior pastor of Promise Land Ministries. Welcome to another, hold on one second here. Welcome to another broadcast of the Promise Land Ministries Network in beautiful Peachtree Corners, Georgia. We're excited to have you here, and we thank you, Lord, and, 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 and we thank you, Lord, for allowing the people to come in live streaming. And we just do this, like I said, we have we have people here, but we do this. This is not some television broadcast, but we do that part to announce for the sake of you. Amen. Right. Amen. That, that's not who we we're, we're very hands-on. We're very hands-on ministry. And so we believe we, we're instructed of the Lord to serve you. So welcome in, and thank y'all for being here in the house of God yeah. to get the word of God today. Amen. Yeah. And we thank you for that. We thank you for that. You know, and, 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 and thanks, Kevin, for, for, for giving me my fashion consult, that pajama, pajama rescue yesterday. That was oh, tight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were pants. Dang. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and get into the word. And, and you already got the announcements. And guess what? Before we start, first lady kind of got on me about praying for giver, praying for the folks who give and have the desire to give. Amen. Because we know we can't always give and we can have the desire to give and might not be in a position to give. Or we're going to get there. And we want to let you know, that. hey, look, even if you can't, we love you here. It's not about money here. Amen. It's about the money that you give is for you because we are a ministry of faith and we believe that when God, when you with, get with, you give to a ministry that's obedient to God and someone's living a holy upright lifestyle, that that blesses your life. Amen? But guess what? It's not a trouble giving like a condemnation thing. God loves you and guess what? God will, God will, and, and this, this might hurt the ministry, but God will bless you even without that if your heart is right. He's more of a heart God because you can give a million dollars, but if your heart is just nasty and you're unforgiving, guess what? It ain't going to work. Amen? So get the heart right first, right? And then work on the give. Matter of fact, Jesus said this. He says when you come to give, he said if you got, if you mad at your brother and you about to give a gift, he says leave your gift right there and then go get it right with your brother then give. Jesus would rather for you to love folks than to give money. Amen? And so that's the priority. We're a loving ministry. And guess what? Thank you. Thank you. For, I, I, I see you're happy. So I feel like everybody forgive their neighbor. I don't like to see nobody mad. You know? So <laughs> praise God. Hey, hey, to me, that's a win. <laughs> to me, that's better than the tie. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're growing. And I celebrate you for growing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much. So I'm, I want to pray over the giving. And, and guess what? The people who wanted to give and couldn't give. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God, for, for the givers and the people who had a desire to give. Lord, you said you give bread to the eater and seed to the sower, Lord God. Right. We bless them. Bless them to be able to give. Bless them with seed to give, Lord God. Father, Lord God, heal the hearts of people who have been hurt or offended by church and misled and hurt, Lord God, and don't want to give because of that, Lord God. We've all been there, Lord God. And Lord God, this is not a ministry of condemnation. We ask you to touch the heart and heal them and let them know that in spite of the mistakes of ministries, even my own mistakes, Lord God, that guess what? You love them, Lord God, that you care for them. Lord God, I ask you to give them some gas money, some food money today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So guess what, y'all? We have been in a series called The Armor of God, you know, and it's been good. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And we talked about... And we talked about, guess what? Um, we've been talking about the armor of God, right? And how the enemy tries to play tricks on you. Amen? Amen? There's an old hip-hop song. Y'all might not know it, but, but, but Kevin and Light Li Up and Know It. My mind trained tricks on you. Had the little bad little midget. I don't know his name. What was his name again? Bushwick Bill. Little bad, little bad little midget. Big old head from Dallas, right? My mind playing tricks on me, right? Little, little, little the ghetto boys was what? Huh? The ghetto boy? Huh? Houston. Yeah. The boy's from Houston, right? Little bad, little mean, little midget was rapping, right? <laughs> but guess what? The devil can play tricks on your mind. Amen? And we talked about even at Bible study on Sunday how the devil can, guess what? Now get you um, to make you feel unhappy and you got everything that you believe in God for already. 
He did with Adam and Eve. The devil tricked Adam and Eve and said, guess what now? Um, um, if you bite of this tree, you know, you're going to know good from evil and you're going to have all of the knowledge and all that other stuff. And guess what? They already had it. And we talked about how many people have left their marriage, left their family, left their job, want happiness, and they had it right there. All along. All along. And we talked about how again, you can let your emotions or the spirit of offense. We don't want to let the spirit of offense now to take us away from God, what God has ordained for our life. People have walked out of their marriage because so-and-so didn't tell me I love me today. I, tell, look, I love you today, but guess what? He come home every day. He ain't drinking. He ain't beating up. But yeah, he need to work on that, but dang, you know? And all of a sudden now, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, you're going to leave because she gained weight and all that other stuff, but she didn't have five of your kids. <laughs> Put up with your ugly behind. Like, you're going to just go out there, and like, you look like Michael B. You still, you 48, think you look 23. You think you look like Michael B. You think you still got it. So I'm going to go and, you know, oh. <laughs> I'm going to leave my house, you know. And your, my, your wife, is because he's a good wife, she make you feel like you're the finest man in the world. I told my wife, I said, I know, I, you know, ain't nobody want me but you, but thank you. <laughs> I'm happy with that, you know. You know, I'm happy. She make me feel like I'm the most dashing, charming, you know. But I'm a, I'm a real, that's what a good wife's supposed to do, Right. But don't, come on, that don't go out there and try to fly. Come on. <laughs> Just because your spouse make you feel like you invincible, that don't go. Yeah. Outside of that relationship, you, that's gravity, all right? <laughs> don't go out there and think you still got it. You in the club, your back hurt. You know what I mean? <laughs> huh? Trying to chase some 21, you're like, come here, girl. Hold on. Be still, baby. You know? <laughs> Hold on. Right, you know? <laughs> I'll buy something for you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right? And so that's what happened. You can let the devil get you in an emotion, and your emotions get you to where you're not even receiving from God. And so guess what? If you're an emotional person, guess what the devil, and it's called the wiles of the devil. We talked about the tricks of the devil. So guess what? If you're an emotional person, if your feelings are hurt, if you do, and you know that, and the devil knows you're going to be shut down by that, if the devil knows that you're going to be shut down with money tight, if the devil knows he, you're going to be shut down when somebody corrects you, if the devil knows you, if your kids roll their eyes, you're going to be mad, right. and then you stop, guess what? He's going to stop. And guess what we talked about in Bible study? I got a secret for you. Everybody go through that. You ain't the only one with crazy kids that you want to throw out a window. You edit that, you know. You ain't the only one that you done fed them and they're going to tell you to pee. And you want to, you know, when the camera's off, you want to come here for a minute, you know. You ain't the only one want to silence some people, but they got an 800 number, so we can't do it. That's the only thing that's saving you is that 800 number. <laughs> right? That's it. Right? <laughs> Amen. But the devil will fool you into believing you're the only one got the same problem. You're the only one dealing with fighting weed. You're the only one dealing with homosexuality. You're the only one uh, 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 dealing with that your wife ain't giving you. You're the only one dealing with, with the dude ain't want to work. And so when you get sorry for yourself, the enemy gets you to walk out on your blessing because you're taking it personal. When I was in, when I, in corporate America, when I first got in from the military, um, Man, I was sensitive, to, you know, and we had managers that would try to correct you in public. They, they like to do that in IT for some reason, right? And so, man, I'm mad. And this dude that trained me said, man, don't take that personal. I, that's the first time I had heard that statement before. Basically, he was saying he do that to everybody. The devil do that to everybody. You ain't the only one that's broke at times. You ain't the only one that's trying to fight to get gas money again. You ain't the only one that that's, yeah, don't want to go to work on uh, Monday, but you got to pray. You ain't the only one that's got to uh, fighting blood pressure or something like that. You ain't the only one. Got your because I love her. You know what I mean? You ain't the only one. <laughs> you know? You ain't the only one. So you think you don't want to. The devil got you walking like a slow jam, you know. <laughs> I make love to you. <laughs> You, know, you ain't the only one. <laughs> huh? <laughs> like you want me, you know, all that, you know. I guess, you know, me, first lady, and, and, and Kevin get them jokes, you know. <laughs> the 80s jams, 90s jams. Amen. 
So what happened is the devil know that if he punch you, you shut down. And there's no champion that wins that ever I get punched in the stuff. And you got to stand up and say, devil, is that all you got? Devil tried to attack me the day before, you know, showing me some video or some stuff, you know. <laughs> My kids doing some stupid stuff. I'm like, man, I, I, I bust a dog. I said, <laughs> I said Devil, is that all you got? That used to tear me up two years ago. Amen. But anyway, guess what? We're talking about the armor of God. How do you prevent that from happening? How, we're talking about success in life. It's not just in the corporate world, but in your family, in your pocketbook, in your body. And God will require you to stand in the way to get there. Amen. Right. The reason why you can't ever win because you always quitting. Every time I say your heart ain't in it. I'm going to read the word, but I ain't. Yeah, yeah. And your life sucks. Maybe you should try God. But you're around folks and you're so, you're so used to losing that it don't even bother you no more. That don't even bother you. You don't have no drive no more. I told you, men, you shouldn't marry somebody that likes losing all the time. And women, you should not even be attracted to somebody that's okay losing. Have no drive. Ain't got no desire to be here. Ain't got no desire to win. Ain't got no desire. Ain't got no fight in them whatsoever. No fight whatsoever. They're going to let you fight and then they, uh, can I have? God, you uh, just, just, you know what I'm saying? Right. At least fight. I'm not mad. If you, if you get hit, I'm fine with it. But what, pit, what bothers me is that you won't even fight. And you got the nerve to get an attitude everybody else and you the one that's so weak you won't even get off the mat and swing. Don't get mad at nobody else. Don't get despondent at nobody else. You the one that just want, you want to, and then you're going to latch on to somebody that's going to fight. So when they get something, you, oh, I'm hungry. Give me this right here. And you're going, you will wear, they were women, men. If you give somebody like that, they will wear you out and you will look 75 at 50. Stop trying to carry people because you think you can't get better. If they can't fight for themselves, they'll never fight for you. If they don't want better for themselves, they're never for they're always the victim. Nobody like that. And black women fight more than the brothers do. And I, it makes me want to puke. You got your woman out there fighting and you. And she only if she did, if she didn't have low so self-esteem, she'd have left you behind in the dust. The devil got her thinking she can't get no better. That's why. The devil got him thinking he can't get no better. You know what I'm saying? You got my, you got brothers out there mad at everybody else, and they the ones muscle bound, got the, uh, their mouth bigger than their heart. But won't get up and fight for your mama, won't fight for your, got your mama homeless, got every, all the women struggling now, and you don't have enough to pay. Now, I got to do something. I got to do something. Something to you as a man, as a boy ass man, going to make you want to do something. And you got the nerve to be mad at me. You mad at me because I'm exposing you. How dare you? I'll probably get a speech because first lady love y'all. <laughs> Don't talk to them like that. Give them a pie. And, you know. they do better. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting these, 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 these sorry men, man. You don't have to have a million dollars, but you have to have a million dollar fight. You have to have a million dollar vision. You stop acting. You ain't no little boy. Just stand your behind up. If you have sex like a man, you can fight like one. If you can cuss like a man, you can fight like one. Fight. Get the word and fight. Be here and fight. Pray and fight. Don't let her carry your behind. You get up and do something. The word today is stand, and it is about fighting because God will have you put God, the stuff that's important in your life now, you're going to have to begin to pray and fight for it. And with a message today, it's called flip the switch. 
You have been wanting a good man. You've been wanting a Boaz. You've been wanting a, a good life. But guess what now? Because your failure to, to, to get these notes and begin to pray over them and get outright mad and pray with an attitude. Oh, Lord God, I have a right to this stuff. I call it far from the north, the south. Y'all for promising, y'all know how promising, y'all know how to pray. The east and the west right now, I declare and I decree right now. I call for my healing in the name of Jesus. What you're doing is flipping the switch. Amen. We're gonna get into that today. Why is it not God coming to my rescue? Why is not God? Because God has just like this building right here, God has paid the light bill. He's paid the bill. He's paid all this stuff right here. God ain't going to come in here and turn his lights on for you. He turned, he paid your light bill. He gave you a place to stay. And all you got to do now is begin to flip your own switch. I'm tired of the way I'm living. Flip the switch. What do you Open your mouth and declare the word of God. Put on the armor of God. God is not going to put the armor on for you. God, is, you got to stand for yourself. And what's happening now, you yoked up with sorry behind Negroes that don't want to do nothing but stand, and you doing all the work, and you tired and crying because they, they sucking you dry. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Ain't got the nerve to have self-respect. Ain't got the nerve to be mad at you and me and everybody else. Because why? They, they don't want to take responsibility for being sorry. So they go deflect on everybody else because they don't want to face who they are. False masculine stuff, but won't fight for what really counts. Don't fight me, fight the devil. Don't fight your, don't fight society, fight the devil, fight poverty. You got all that fighting you, go fight poverty. Fight the gas money demon, fight the job demon. God don't need you to be God. But God needs you to, God is giving you, let me go into the word real quick, baby. Let me go into the word, okay? This is going to help you. This is not a correction thing. When you get this, this is a new level. This is what's stopping you because the devil got you thinking there's no power in your prayer. There's no power in your praise. There's no power in you professing the word of God. And all you got to do, and when you confess the word and pray, you're flipping the light switch on. What does that mean? You're activating what you want. You're activating that good man. You're activating that good woman. You're activating. You're bringing it into existence now because you're coming in agreement with what God said. God is literally waiting on you to hand his word back to him in prayer. But you said so the devil got you feeling sorry for that. You, you listen to some, some slow jams. <laughs> I'll make love to you. <laughs> you haven't been here before, and it's your only your first time. You know? <laughs> huh? And you just, oh, can we turn it back to whatever? <laughs> can somebody tell me <laughs> how perfect love goes wrong? <laughs> <laughs> you crying. And God saying, stop, get up, and declare my word. So I can have something that angels hearken to the rest of the word, the voice, the, the voice of the word of God. And so what happens now, because you're not praying the word, your angels ain't got nothing to do. And so the devil will yoke you with some sorry behind something that ain't going to do nothing anyway with it. Have no drive, sitting there just plain lazy. And sucking you. You always see in a couple, you always have somebody that's a doer and somebody that's just an excuse. And that, that, that the excuse maker don't ever go with another doer. They don't ever go with another excuse because they'll never eat. Mm. They go find a worker Man. with emotional problems and then drain them and then go to the next one. Then they go to the next one, and there's all in their relationship, they the victim. They the ones that did right, and nobody did them wrong. So they suck you in, so you work and busting your behind, and your bill money going to who? The same person that got a nasty attitude, same person that's always mad, same person that, huh? Let's get to the word. I don't want y'all thinking I'm, you know, how you, black folk, well, you preaching on me today, man, that's the Holy Spirit. You, you deal with it. If that's your shoe, tie it. He's trying to get you to another level. 
I'm trying to tell you that a lot of things in your life that you've been believing God for have not been happening, not because God doesn't want to do it, but because he's waiting on a certain thing called your part. This message is called Flip the Switch. Amen? And we're going to go into Ephesians again. And, and, and you should have Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. And just keep that there. Keep your bookmarker there for now. God wants you to value his word to the point you're going to have to fight for it. This is not a man. What God allows effort because he wants you to, he wants to know that you value it. When you when you dating a good woman, she ain't gonna just give you whatever because she wants you to value her. So you gotta have to pursue her. She ain't gonna always pay for dinner and all that other stuff. Tell me I ain't materialistic. No, no, women, you need to make them pay because guess what? There's value. You need to let people pursue and woo you. They they got money for weed. need to pursue you and guess what if they're not in that place that's fine but they they should be they're not in the place to date you without that because dating in the biblical terms is interest in marriage and no man should be dating somebody and ain't got no job struggling with stuff because you can't that you can't do it they, you got a big mouth and no job shut up nobody's scared of you humble yourself down arrogant for no reason why are you so tough? Because guys, you should know, don't, you cannot date a woman and don't have stuff. Because black women have already lowered their standards so much already. And then they drain and dine early because of these dudes. We'll talk about it, kid. <laughs> some. Some, okay? Some. I'll put some there. <laughs> I don't want no parking lot ministry today. Yeah. That's one of my best friends. I love him, though. He gives me great insight. He's a, he's a brother more than a brother than a friend. And so what I'm saying, let me go. Let's go to the word of God. Amen. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. You want God to answer your dreams. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. This is to help you. This is what your dad should have told you. The one that loved you. If he loved you, he should have told you that you're special already. Son and daughter. He should tell you, hey, look, look, son, just pray. You can believe you're smart enough to do this thing. Don't let, I know times have kicked you down, but you can get up and fight. This is not a message where I'm mad or God mad at anybody like that. It's not that. It's trying to get you where, hey, look, there's a better way to doing it. Maybe you, you're tired because you have been wrestling against flesh and blood, but not involving God. Amen? Amen? Men and women. And if you get over the offense of this and that think people are picking on you, you humble and receive the help. Verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the, armor, the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand against what? The wild, the tricks of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high place. The devil don't want you to have a happy house. The devil don't want you to have a Boaz. The devil don't want you to have a roof. The devil doesn't want you to have contracts so you, start contracts so you can be given to people. The devil don't want you to finish Boaz. So you're not fighting against flesh and blood. That, that, the devil will use flesh and blood, but you're not fighting against flesh and blood. I've been told by men, the devil will use the closest person to you to keep you if he got to. And they don't even know it. They're not evil people. You're wrestling not against flesh and blood. But guess what? You still wrestle, though. And what's happening now is you stop wrestling. You got quiet because you're wrestling wrong. You're wrestling with flesh and blood. When you wrestle with flesh, it'll tear you out. Instead of praying for Clarence, you're there. Won't you get a job? You sorry, so and so. You need to either let Clarence go, and, and, and or, or or guess what? Now, if you're married to him, you stuck with the booger. You know what I'm saying? Or continue to pray. Yeah. Just stop wrestling with a spirit. You can tell when somebody's on their spirit because no matter how much you argue, they're still gonna do what they're gonna do. 
That means you're right. You're going around with a spirit every every two months. You want you get a job. Want you do this and want you do that. And the devil telling them don't do nothing. You a victim. So and so. So they trying to make you do this. They trying to you so pitiful. Look at people. Are, uh, everybody always picking on you. Right. That's what that thing. When you're trying to tell them truth, the, the person is influenced by the spirit. Guess what? They they the devil tell them the same. They walk around the same. Thing. Ain't nothing you gonna say to penetrate. I'm gonna still do what I'm gonna do anyway. I don't even want to be here. I don't want to do. Yeah. And that's the devil telling them all in the head. And you over here fussing and you wearing yourself out. Because you're wrestling with flesh. Yeah. The message today is called flip the switch. Amen. Verse 13 says here, wherefore, take on the whole armor. Say, look, look, you're, since you're wrestling out against flesh and blood, God is telling you this is how you're going to wrestle to win. Look at your neighbor and say, I wrestle, I wrestle. to win. Stop letting the devil talk you out of your marriage and wrestle in the spirit. Stop letting the devil talk you out of your job and wrestle. Stop letting God, the devil talk you out of your mind and wrestle. Stop letting God, the devil talk you out of Boaz and wrestle a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And how are we working the rest of the flesh? I'm going to work I'm going to put in overtime. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to pay this off. I'm going to work extra hours. And God's saying, no, no, no. That ain't how you wrestle with flesh. That ain't how you wrestle against a bill. This is how you, you pray and you, you tithe, you give, you declare, you flip the switch. Because guess what? You'll be working and you'll be exhausted. And then another one come up next. Huh? And you'll be 50, you'll be 70 years old, still wrestling with the same stuff. Working yourself in the grave. Because you're working your flesh, you're working your plan in your flesh. It'll work, but you'll be tired. It'll work, but you'll be miserable. It'll work. You, it'll work. You can get a man with your body, but guess what? You ain't going to like what you get. You can, you can pay all your debts off by working your behind off and not giving, but guess what? At the end of the day, you're going to still be miserable. Why? Because you're working it in your flesh. Wherefore, well, take on the whole honor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand, stand. The Bible says this, that the Bible says this. It says even, even the deceitfulness of, wit, of riches, it says that many are pierced over with sorrows. It says that, he said, he says that, you, look, the real seed that God wants to sow in your life, the real life that God wants to sow in your life, it says the deceitfulness of riches will choke it out. It ain't just money. When you chasing a relationship and God wants you to chase him and then he got the right one for you, guess what now? When you're chasing that, it chokes out what God really wants in your life. Because you, well, how? Because you're not investing in what God wants. You're trying to do it yourself. And you come up with what we call in the Bible Ishmael's. Ishmael's are things that you did that God didn't want. Right. That's right. Teach it. Teach it. That's right. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. And that's where we are today. My apologies. It took a while to get there. Have your, we're going to talk about truth today and flip the switch. Huh? Having your loins girded about with truth. When you want to fight, for your future in Christ, guess what happened now? The first thing you got to have is your loins girded about with truth. You got to have a girded about. What does that mean in the spirit realm? That means that guess what? You take the word of God, which is truth, and you got facts out there, but truth has power to it. Truth has authority to it. Hmm? And so God's truth has creative power to it now, just like when you turn this light switch on, you're not the ones, you're, you're turning the light switch on, but you're not responsible for the power to it. All you're doing is flipping the switch. Look at your neighbor and flip the switch. All you're doing is flipping the switch. When you quote God's word, guess what now? You're not responsible for the power to it now. All you have to do is flip the switch. And when you flip the switch on your healing by quoting by strikes from here, when you flip the switch, it says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and finds favor with the Lord. You're flipping the switch. Amen. Amen. 
And what happens now, the Bible says angels hearken to the voice of the word. They're waiting on that word. They're waiting on it. You're doing all the complaining, and God said, just give me my word back to me. I'm ready to execute it. I'm ready to do it, but I need you to pray my word back to me. So gird your loins about with what truth? Because facts will tell you that you're sick. The doctor report will tell you this about yourself. Your mind will tell you, I don't deserve a good woman. I don't deserve a good man. Look at the mistakes I've made. But the truth will say, who is in Christ, he who is in Christ is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Huh? Behold, all things are new. When you become a Christ, your virginity is restored. The mistakes of the past are gone. And guess what? Oh, I don't see it. Because guess what? Now you got to flip the switch. God is like, it doesn't make sense to you. And it's not reality to you. Because guess what now? Yo, you still in the dark over here talking about, hey, didn't nobody pay the light bill? Right. Right. That's right. God didn't do that. Why? Because I don't see it in my life. Because you want to sit back here now and just wish for something. And you think God going to come in this room and go flip your own light switch. He paid the light bill. Guess what now? He put he wired it for, for lights. Then he put a power company out there now. And guess what? He's not going to come over here and flip the switch for you. So guess what? You're thinking that the word don't work. None of this stuff worked now because you've never tried it. You never flipped the switch. And God will, the Bible says this. The Bible says, he says, I said that you're, in Psalm 92, he got a, a little a mystery scripture out there that Jesus used that you don't, might not even know what's in there. Psalm 92, it says this. He says, I said that you're gods. Little G, not God. Don't get new age on it. Not God, gods. But guess what? You will fall like men. Why? Because you don't flip the switch. So God will, uh, God will let you now literally fall and fail in areas because he's giving you the clue to it, but you don't want to use it. He said, you'll die like me. He said, I say that you're God and the son of the most high God, but guess what? You'll die like men. You'll die like a normal man. You'll fail like a normal man because you didn't understand now that you had power where the power was. You didn't understand to flip the switch. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, flip the switch. I can't find a good man. Don't believe God for it. Pray for one. Declare it over your life. I thank you, Lord God, that you said, Lord God, that I will have a husband, Lord God. I thank you that my husband, Lord God, like you said, will love me as Christ loved the church. He will die for me. He ain't going to be, that Negro ain't going to be killing me. He's going to die for me. I declare in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I want a good wife. I thank you, Lord God, that he who finds a wife finds, finds favor with the Lord. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and finds favor with the Lord. So what I got, when I'm praying this, I'm flipping the switch. And because you have ignored prayer and declaration now, you're so busy complaining, cussing, putting nasty stuff on Facebook, being spiteful, being childish. But all that time you should be, you wasted, you should be flipping the switch and turning your desk. You ain't got to be jealous of nobody. Flip your switch. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Hey, man. That's Jesus says just about his word. He says, my word is spirit and life. He says, my word is, pi is spirit filled with life. My word is just not words on the internet. My words ain't just words on social media. My words have life to them. And if you speak them back to me, they will produce. Flip the switch, baby. Flip the switch. When I started doing, when I started failing at my job, I had to begin to wake up in the morning and say, no, the devil, you're alive for the word of God says that you will bless, God will bless the work of my, didn't I? I wake people up in the morning. I, I ain't, huh? Every morning I'm up with the roosters. <laughs> huh? Barking God's word at him, huh? I declare and decree, Lord God. I call out, Lord God, and you said I'm, I got favor with you and favor with men, don't I? I declare and I decree, Lord God, that you said you blessed the work of my hands, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. You said, Lord God, if I don't have wisdom, Lord, I can ask of you and you will not hold it back. I'm flipping the switch. Flipping the switch. And what happens now, 
us lazy, shiftless people, we don't understand this because it requires work. What we want to do is connect with people that's doing it, and then when they don't give us what we want, we get mad. And I'm telling you, the key, I'm not going to give you an app, I'm going to give you the whole tree. The whole tree. So you can produce. God wants you to produce. What kind of a pastor would I be if I didn't teach you how to begin to pray and believe God for yourself? Only a slave master wants to give you a little bit so you stay on the plantation. He don't want you owning your own land. He don't want you owning your own stuff. You need to stay away from folks that don't own nothing. Don't want to own nothing. Don't have an ownership mindset. Don't have no dreams. Amen. Stay away from that because that stuff seems to be, it's, it's contagious. Flip the switch. Flip the switch. Stop sitting there and taking the, what the devil's hitting you with. You wrestle not against flesh and blood, but God's trying to toughen you up so you can wrestle. Why? So that you can lead other people. He needs to have you strong, not in your flesh and your attitude, because some of the weakest people I know got the biggest mouths. But you need to have somebody. You got Mike Tyson to tell you that, because every time when Mike Tyson used to fight, the guy, his opponent be talking all this stuff, and Mike Tyson just sitting like this. And you know you in trouble. Mike Tyson get quiet, you got problems. <laughs> At the end, when he started biting ears, that's when he's scared. Huh? But if he there with no socks on, no T-shirt on, just a cut-off little thing over there, he's just sitting there like, you, it's going to be a short day for you. <laughs> huh? You want to get, get him, you want to get crazy people talking. Amen. Because what is it? An empty can makes the loudest noise. Some of you need to be quiet and start building. Some of you talk too much and you ain't building nothing. You need to stop hanging around women. Stop trying to, even the young ones now, don't hang out with, don't even be attracted to a man that ain't building nothing. Hmm? He have a dream. What's your dream? Well, I don't know. Bye, you can't know. You can't get with this then because I'm a dreamer. My spiritual father's a dreamer. Amen. Mm -hmm. Trying to uh, 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 get somebody and try to fix them up. And so they can owe you and then they can't escape. No. Mm -hmm. God, back. that's the works of the flesh. Flip the switch yeah. so that you don't have to do all that manipulation stuff. Flip the switch. And then when God brings somebody to you, they are ready. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Flip the switch. So you gird, so you gird your lawns with truth. What does that mean? When you go, the armor of God is for war. And so when you go into what, guess what? There's stuff, there's stuff out there that God is not going to, you're not just going to come in and get it. You got to fight and take it. You have to snatch your healing back from the devil. You have to snatch that husband out of that. You got to snatch that job. You got to snatch that certification. You got to snatch. Some of you have been robbed by the devil and you got to demand justice. And begin to pray for it. Some of you are too calm. You're too cool. You're too, you're too smooth with it. You're hanging around people that say, I don't know. I'm hungry. I want some sex. That's all they, you know? Hungry and sex. That's it. You got to begin to fight for better things. Because guess what? When you want something better, the reason why is because the devil, because you're sitting here in church right now, you're listening, you're a threat to the devil. So the devil is not just going to let you have a happy family or a healed body or a career that you want. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to wrestle with him for it. But if you wrestle, you'll win. Guess what? The reason why God's not involved in your fight, because you didn't even fight. Why would God want to help you when, and, and to get something that you don't even feel like is worth? Why would God want to fight for you and it ain't even valuable? Why would God want to fight for your children you ain't even praying for them? Why would God want to give you a good husband and wife and you ain't even praying for one? You settling. If you ain't value, it's true. If you're not valuing it, God ain't going to value it. Amen. We talked about it a years back. 
that guess what? In the promised land, there were grapes there, and there were, prom- there were giants there. And I told you that giants like grapes too. You're going to have to fight for it in this season. If the word of God, you have to declare, you're going to have, the Bible says, put me in remembrance of my word. Let us plead together. You're going to have to begin to fight and declare and stand on some stuff and have and live holy and tell the devil no and tell uh, sex no, tell homosexuality. You have to tell some sin no. You got to tell them websites no. You got to tell witchcraft and zoology and astrology no. I'm a Capricorn. Billy Ray Valentine. No. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to leave that astrology stuff. You don't have time for that. When you're in a fight, you got to strip out all of the excess stuff. You don't even read the Bible and you're reading all the other stuff. <laughs> Dang. You know what I'm saying? You put on the girdle of truth. You put on the, and, and, and we're about to go into takeaways here. You put gird your loins with truth because the devil's coming with a lie. He's coming. Guess what? When the devil wants to steal from you, what he does is what he does. Before he takes this thing out your hand, he'll offer you this. And while you're looking over here, he take the truth out your hand and he give you this. Well, yeah, the Bible is he, he because guess what? Now, he know the only thing that can beat him is the word of God that's got the power of God to it. I, if you don't believe me, try to go to court with your feelings and not a legal case. And the judge might like you, but this your enemy got a legal case and says, okay, the state of the state law says this. And so they got to enforce, the state got to enforce their own words. They're not obligated to enforce your words. Take your Holy Ghost. God is not obligated in the court of heaven to enforce your funky behind words. I'm a Gemini. I'm a nobody care about that stuff. God is obligated in his jurisdiction to enforce his words, not yours. But you're so prideful that you want everybody to hear your words instead of his. So guess what now? You don't study none of this stuff. And so the devil fooled you. And so he got your head and your spirit filled all of that garbage from the Internet over here while he's stealing this from you. Because guess what? He know that when you go to God, the only thing that God is obligated to enforce is his word. What about the energy? What about the frequency? What about this? You over here, right? I've been to court before. <laughs> I went in there crying and all this other stuff, trying to tell them how I felt. And the judge just said, man, be quiet. You, you're repeating yourself. They don't care about that. They care about statutes and laws that they wrote. All right, we're going to the takeaways. But the biggest thing in your life, when you're trying to win, the devil's going to put the strikes in your face so you're focusing on this so he can steal the thing. that, that He's going to steal the only thing that's got the power to stop him. I think Kevin was telling me a, a, a while back about this famous group that was singing and had number one hits and was still living in the projects and because their manager had legal paperwork. So the manager took all the money because the manager used the state's words against them and they didn't have no state's words. <laughs> you're, trying to, you're trying to fight the devil with astrology that he created. <laughs> you're trying to fight the devil with new age, huh? And you love that, but they ain't got no power to it. Sage, all that other stuff, you'll fight for that. But when somebody says something about Christianity, you're like, yeah, you're right, the white man did right. You ain't got, you, you fighting in the wrong place. Yo, that's like your heart's in the wrong place. So when, when somebody says something about Christ, you ain't, you're not offended or whatever. Unless somebody says something about, about, about that crap that's out there now. you offend it. Why? Because your heart's bonded to it. You, you don't know if you love somebody or not. If you love your wife or love the woman with you, well, that's somebody offending. If you feel like you met, then you know, that's love. Right? When you feel like that about that stuff, that means you've already bonded to it. The devil has won then. So you have a spiritual side check. Kevin told me to be relevant. Kevin, like, I got to talk to you about that. 
Hmm? <laughs> and you love your side chick. <laughs> Amen? Flip the switch. We're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. We've got 11 minutes. I'm doing good. Amen? You must know the truth to recognize the lie. God wants you to win, but the devil's biggest pay to get you is a lie. He's a liar. And you'd be surprised how many people tell me about what, what they heard and the astrology and all that stuff. And you know it comes from the devil. And, and the Jesus told you 25 times that the devil is what? A what? Everybody know it. it's in the black Bible. It's in the ghetto Bible. You know what I'm saying? It's in the ratchet Bible. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's in the Magic City, buddy. Co it's the Cocoa Butter got that. In. She got that highlighted. You know what I'm saying? It's in the Weed Bible. <laughs> huh? It's in the Fake Eyelashes Bible. You know what I'm saying? Huh? It's in the Gold Teeth Bible. <laughs> it's in the Tattoo on My Face Bible. <laughs> huh? It's in, the, it's in that Bible. You tell me, you don't know, the devil, God, tell you up front. You know that he's a liar now. And we're going to still go listen to him. <laughs> we're going to steal because the devil got you thinking that God's trying to hide something from you. And so he got you over here on the Internet. And because you don't know the truth, you can't come back to lie. You don't have no scriptures in you, so you're going over there. It's almost like somebody going some, a level too soon, and you don't even have a foundation of the truth. If you're going to go to listen to that crap, you need to have your belt of truth on first. And some of you don't even have that. You don't, have, you don't know two scriptures, and you're going to go spend 18 hours on that stuff. They're not prepared to deal with the spirits with it. And you come back in here wanting to fight me. <laughs> Get out of here. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, you're going to go do that. Get your little fast tail, your belt with truth on first. Amen? I'm going to go to the crack house. I just got out two weeks ago, and God called me to sell the gospel to the crack. Girl, you just got delivered. You're going to go back in there and, <laughs> and smoke that place out. You better stay away from the crack house for about two years and let God get that stuff out your system. Talk to you, you're going to go in there with a Bible. <laughs> huh? You're going to smell yourself, so I'll give you this Bible for $25. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What? You must know the truth to recognize the lie. It says here, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Not facts, the truth. Yeah. Amen. In order to flip the switch in your life, you got to have the word of God in your life. Right. So when the devil comes to you with the wilds and those tricks, guess what you'll know? No, I don't want to have sex because the Bible tells me if I have fornication, that dries up my blessing. Are you going to pay my bills? No, well, then God been doing good at that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Clarence, <laughs> if you ain't going to pay my bills, then why am I going to give you something then? You're going to pay my bill, pay my telephone bill, pay my automobiles. Uh, 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 uh. That's my video. You can pay my bills, pay my telephone bill. Pay <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> that was a jam back in the day. Come on, Kev, you know, you, you, you know all that stuff. Don't even try it. Don't try it. You know, you know. So, right? You ain't going to pay the bills. Then don't be trying to follow out, right? Take away too. Write this stuff down. Why? Because when you go home, you're going to activate this stuff. And the devil should have a surprise. The enemies in your life, the spiritual enemies in your life, not no human now. Then guess what? Should have a surprise. Hmm? It's to the point when I got them court notices, boy, I'd just laugh at me. I'm saying, here, go stick it on the stack over here. Yeah? I trust God. Take away two. The enemy will speak to you in your own voice. Some of us have the dumbest ideas when it comes to rebelling against God, and the devil talks to you in your own voice so you can receive it. You think you're thinking that. I ain't going to ever come back up in here again. These people are crazy. I ain't going to ever. And it's the devil saying it, but you think it's you. <laughs> huh? You know what? You're too tired to read the word of God. Today. You need some rest. You need to read. You don't work so hard. You can't be tired. Just go ahead and go get some rest. You don't have to tune in and go get the word on Wednesday or whatever, because you need some rest. And you think it's you because it's sounding like you. 
And the devil's trying to keep you less and less exposure to the word. Pastor don't love you because if he did, he wouldn't be saying all that stuff. He's just like your father. He just, man, and the devil's saying it in your own voice that you believe in him. If Jesus told you 25,000, 8,028 times that he is a what? Liar. Everything that come out of his mouth is a lie. And he's good at it. <laughs> that devil can tell you a lie so smooth, you're like, man, it's got to be right. He said he loved me, you know? <laughs> he said them five kids ain't his. <laughs> That's what he said. You know? <laughs> that it was her fault. <laughs> Andre said it was her fault. All them other eight women, it was he was an innocent. He was a victim. She was a victim because he was she was in 18 abusive relationships and nobody could love her better than that. And, 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 and you know what I'm saying? Oh, good and well. Crazy for the never they fault. I'm trying to help you. Why? Everybody has stuff. Listen to the, every Jesus. The devil's talking to Jesus. You got to know the truth enough to understand that the devil will talk to you in your own voice. Even if he agreeing with stuff that your flesh want. Guess what? The, Jesus said, Peter um, came to Jesus. Jesus said, I got to go to the cross and die. And, G and Peter said, say it ain't so. And Jesus looked and said, get behind me who? That's right. Jesus' flesh wanted to hear that because G he asked God later on, pass this cup for me. He didn't want to go to the cross. And so the devil was agreeing with his flesh. Yeah. Go in and sleep with it. Go ahead and visit that porno site. It ain't going to work. You know, you, you fine. Go ahead and, you know, give it. You know, you, everybody is. It's to 21st century. Everybody has sex. Everybody does it. Everybody listen, which ain't a bad word. Spell don't mean magic. It means spelling something. The devil come up with some stuff. We, he think we stupid. It's just the energy and the frequency. You ain't got to call God by his name. And you know what I'm saying? You ain't got to obey him. It's, he's just the energy. You know what I mean? He's, a, he's an equation based on this and this and this. That, that's like somebody called you a carbon-based life form. You know what I mean? <laughs> Child, I will tear you up. I, this carbon-based life form didn't pay for your braces. Daddy did. Right. And this carbon-based life form told you to go get the trash. Right? right. Amen. The enemy will talk to you in own voice. Why? Because he understands that when you obey God, that's going to bring life and prosperity. It's going to bring healing in your life. If you ever get this to where you begin to preach, speak the word of God to yourself, declare the word of God, and live the word of God in your life, you cannot be taken. Right. You cannot lose right. with the stuff I use. Eat and heal. Right? Yes. I wish I had gotten this younger. I wish I had gotten this. I would not have had to go through what I did. Amen. Take away three. We're almost there. Three minutes. Stay under anointed teaching. Stay in church. Stay in. The biggest lie the devil will tell in this generation, I don't need church because God is everywhere. Stupid is everywhere too. You know what I mean? <laughs> Forrest Gump said and it does what it does, right? You know, good and well you need God needs you around people. Why? Because people get to acting crazy by themselves. They come up with crazy stuff by themselves, and the Bible says there's a way that seems right but ends in destruction. When we're not going to church, and you know, you got people, I've been hurt. Everybody's been hurt at church. I've been hurt at church. That's why I don't go. But guess what now? For the opposite sex, they done robbed you, lied, cheated. Everybody done had a bad relationship. But guess what? You, 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 you got a new haircut. You got nails done because you, know, you, 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 you waiting for your next hope. <laughs> You've been burnt on how many times by love, but guess what? Now you ain't quit on it. But God get one or two little chances. And all of a sudden now, I'm not talking about the folks here, but you got some people out there now sitting at home talking about, you know, scratching your toes, you know, coming in when you want to. You need to be in a church, a local body. Why? You don't because the, the, the pastor going to see it. Stay under anointed teaching. Stay in church. Hebrews. 24 and 25 says, and let us, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Guess what it says, though? Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is saying this. 
When you come here, he speaks to you different from someone else that doesn't make it, not physically. When you tune in, God has a word for you. He's got encouraged. How many of you have come, come to church one way and left and, and encouraged, left with a prophetic word, yeah. left with the next instructions for your level? Right. Yeah. When you come to church, it's more than just religion. God is giving us a prophetic activation over your pastor, and when they speak over your life, then the, 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 the oh, doors open. God honors that man, a woman of God, and when you're sitting under anointed teaching, you're not just sitting under their teaching, you're sitting under their favor. And they're able to pray for you, even when you nasty to them. If you got a good pastor, they don't take that person. Like, well, I, I, I pray for all y'all. We all crazy. And y'all got parking lot men. That stuff don't bother me. I still be like, Lord bless them. Lord do this. Lord do this. Because I've been there before. I said some stuff that was crazy. And what they did is they threw me away and got mad at me, and I, I wouldn't do that. Because people, when they drown and they swing, but we still love them. You still, everybody here, you're still family. Even though you get on my nerves, you still, <laughs> huh? But we still pray. Amen? So your pastors, we, we trying to flip the switch, but you got to help us flip it and believe God for it. We call it every day. I call every last one of you by name. I don't just say, well, let me go take, take, bless her. I, 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 I try to dig in and say, Lord, bless her with this, bless her with this, bless her with this. I get detail. I go to work on you, by name, huh? Go, go bless Tavares. Go do, and I get a list. I pray. I say, this is blessing, not no, huh? Build them up. Hold them up. Yeah. Call them for it. What they I cry for it in the name of Jesus. Their destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. I, 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 we were talking about, I loose the change off of them right now. In the name of Jesus. I go in fighting for mine. So you go to church and sit on anointed teaching because they help you pray and agree. They help guard. The Bible says that pastors are accountable for your soul. So we're not just supposed to preach. I'm supposed to be praying for you, declaring the best over your life. It's forgiving the crazy stuff you say and keep believing God for you. So the Bible says, I give you pastors after his own heart. Amen. Amen. Stay in church. It benefits you to be under anointed teaching. You got what we call covering. And covering is when you got, got covering, you got somebody just praying for you. That's right. That's right. Calling, checking on you with Boaz. Spr praying strength on you. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Verse 25, for not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together as a manner of some, but exhorting one another. Exhorting one another. When you're here, you, can exhort, you, you get exhorted when you're here. You're not by, look at your neighbor and say, you're not by yourself. You got me. We have each other. You're exhorting one another when you're in God's house. Guess what? Now, even, even remotely now, we comfort each other. I know she, but Sister Britt got my back. Tammy got my back. Keisha got my back. Huh? Chaz, my brother, I talked to him yesterday, got my back. Huh? Kev got McLean got my back. Come on, my brother McLean. Huh? Amen. Got our back. We're here together. So when you're here, this is a family. The devil wants to get you by yourself so he can pick you off one by one. That's right. That's right. Miles Monroe said that the lone banana is the one that gets peeled. <laughs> he's, from the, he's from the island, so, you know, I love the brother, you know. Miles Monroe said it from Bahamas. He said the lone banana gets peeled, baby. <laughs> Take away four. You fight lying voices by speaking the truth of the word of God. The devil, you're not going to make it. You're going to die. You're too old to have kids. You're too old. That's all a lie. You're not smart enough to finish school. Hmm? Your kids hate you. You'll never, they'll never be saved. How do you fight that? For me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Huh? Oh, you're too old to have a faith. You're too old. No, no, no. He, uh, look, look. God restores the, 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 you know, God restores my years. God restores the years that the local the can't come over and eat. And so you fight those lying voices. You cannot fight thoughts with thoughts. 
T H O U G T. I'm sorry, Kevin, but we have to go there, right? <laughs> it's 21st century. <laughs> These fools. <laughs> well, think thirst and thought, you know. Huh? <laughs> huh? You can't fight it like that. You got to fight it with the word of God. Uh, 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 Matthew 4, 4 says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but he shall live by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. Why? Because just like the court system in Georgia goes, God, Georgia court systems only required to honor what was written in Georgia law. Heaven court system is only required to honor what God said. So guess what? If you want healing, if you want a promotion, if you want huh, uh, Leon to act right, guess what now? Or, 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 or a man of God, guess what? You be going, you got to go pray God's work back to him. God, you promised this. You promised I'll make it. And get, pray that over your children. They get a saved spouse. Pray that they don't make mistakes that we all made. Me too. I pray it over my kids that they don't make them. I don't want them looking up and mentoring everything I do because I don't want them to get everything I got. And when you're a good parent, you realize, okay, you know, everything I tell you ain't right. Apostle Paul said, follow me as I would follow Christ. That means Apostle Paul even said there's some stuff out there. You should, even Apostle Paul said there's some stuff out there you shouldn't copy. Apostle Paul said and allows reading Romans, and he said once, he said, now this ain't God, it's me. Parents, we have to be so transparent that we say, okay, don't follow this about me. Follow this. And guess when they get older, they're going to have to say it to their kids. Ain't nobody going to be perfect. Only perfect parent is God. Amen. Amen. So we pray spouses over our children that's godly and saved. Amen. That's on fire for Christ. That don't be bent to, 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 to trauma and compromise. God's birth. And we get, take away five. This is it. 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 Amen. But pray that. Pray that. The devil can tell some of you that your kids will never be saved. Devil telling you that you'll never be healed. Guess what now? Stop letting him talk. You're going to have to flip the switch and activate healing in your life. Guess when you pray the word of God, it activates God's promise in your life. God's promise ain't just going to be. I'm going to do this real quick now and I'm going, right? Look at this Bible right here. Look at this right here. You see it, right? It's got God's word in it. I'm going to put this Bible right here. I'm going to walk away. A lot of that Bible, other than what's in Revelations, has no power to it until I pick it up and begin to, pray and begin to loose it. There's stuff in here that God meant for you to have, huh, in your life. But guess what now? You were meant to have lights on. You were meant to have that. But you can walk around and, and be born and die in this earth and be dark in areas because you won't flip the switch. There's promises in this Bible that you will just suffer through without even having to realize them because guess what? You don't want to pick the Bible up and flip the switch. I'm too dark skinned to do that. But. <laughs> Bonnie, you can't make them jokes. I told you about that. They might confuse you. you know. Let us make them jokes. You know, Kevin on back. You, you can't do that, huh? Nah, he ain't that light. You know, nah, nah. She is, but you know, nah. You, you can't. I love you, baby. Don't. You can't make them jokes, okay? <laughs> Not without me around, okay? <laughs> I love you, Tweety Bird. You're adorable. Just, just know your limits, okay? <laughs> Take away five, and this is it, okay? Understand that there's a difference between truth and facts. We've already talked about this. I need you to write it down. Why, why, why are we asking you to write this down? Because guess what? The liar's coming for you. The devil's coming for you. So you need to have the word, full of the word, so you can say, like Jesus, every time the devil came to Jesus in that, in that when he was tempted for 40 days, he said, it is written. It is written. Jesus knew the word. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. It is written. That you don't put the Lord your God through the test. Every time the devil spoke to Jesus, he didn't quote philosophy. He quote what? The word of God. Right? 
is you got a good lawyer. They know the law. They study it. You don't want to go to no lawyer that's been well, that, that, that you two up and going to, you will be mad as fire. He come in there talking about the frequency. They're like, fool, I'm up for, you know, I'm up for robbery. I didn't do it. You know, don't you know any statutes or anything? There ain't time to be talking about that right now. Some of that stuff is facts, but it ain't the truth right now. I shut I, oh, I will, ooh, I will shoot this. Say something about the frequencies again. One more time. <laughs> and I'm catching these charges for 10 years. You know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You in the fight of your life in court. Just imagine. Imagine. I hope I don't want you to, but imagine getting a lawyer in court that talk like you do. <laughs> huh? And you facing something serious. And you need him to know the law or the truth, not a fact. The truth according to Georgia. And he coming there talking about mercantile law and conspiracies and Morris this and that. And they're about to evict your behind because you didn't pay the rent. He's going to come about a loophole in the Moore's Law. Boy, you're going to, I don't care how I save you. You're like, oh, okay. That's how it's going to be. And I gave you 5000 Cool. Dip. Dip. I got you. No, that's cool. Cool. Dip. I'm, I'm going to get out. I'm going to get parole. I'm coming straight, you know? Mm-hmm. Bet. <laughs> right? Hmm? Hmm. <laughs> I'm a YouTube you. This is going to be on YouTube, too. <laughs> huh? And TikTok. Yeah? All right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's going to last longer than 45 seconds, so it might not be on TikTok. Because I'm, I'm huh? This going to last for 28 days. Amen? Amen? You don't want that. When you are in a war against the devil, you can't quote no doggone facts to him about no freedom. You need to be quoting the truth because you're talking about the courts of heaven. The devil, guess what he's fighting you with? The word. He's going to God about the. He is too. He is too. He went to Job, he went to Job, he went to Jesus and said something about Psalm 91. I'm talking about, you, you go ahead and jump because you get an angel's trot, you know. He misused it. Guess what? The devil ain't even using the stuff he's telling you to use. He ain't going to heaven talking about I'm a Capricorn and a Libra. He going and showing God where you violated his word. Listen to that stuff. God, you said don't let them worship any other gods. And look at that dude over there with astrology right there. He got you to do it, and then he's going to go tell God on you. He won't let you use the word, but he'll use the word to convict you. Now, who the sucker? <laughs> hmm? He got you over there not, trying not to be deceived, and you're the most tricked person in the planet. So you got to fight. You, can't, you, you got to understand there's a difference between truth and, and facts. Amen? And so guess what? This is it. Uh, uh, John 8, 31 through 32 says, Then he, Jesus, then, then said Jesus to the Jews, which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. If you can, not in philosophy. I think I told you before that the Apostle Paul tried to preach philosophy, tried to reach the generation their way. And guess what? On Mars Hill, he preached about philosophy, he preached about the arts, he preached about science, he preached about metaphysics, all that other stuff. And then fools still didn't believe. Because you can't convince a man. You, if a man's bound by that metaphysics stuff, they're a demon possessed. And if you try to go and teach the gospel to them, they're not. They not you're stuck into a spirit. And so that, Apostle Paul spent three days over there. He was exhausted. He didn't know how to get saved. He said, oh, from now on, I'm determined only to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. And he was a whole lot smarter than anybody in the building. Yours and Claire, you know, all of, you know, and I think all of y'all are smart. Apostle Paul had all of that stuff. And he went and tried to teach education and infer facts to people, and facts didn't save them. What saves people is the truth of Jesus Christ. And matter of fact, you don't even do it. The Bible says no one can come to me unless God says no, one can, no man can come to me unless I draw them. To, uh, this is it right here. And verse 3, and you shall know the what? The truth, not facts, and the truth shall make you free. What truth? Not the truth like uh, uh, facts. People could choose facts. With truth. The truth of Jesus Christ. There's power in the blood. Paul said, well, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power unto salvation to him who believes. I got more degrees than the thermometer. I, have, I graduated from the, number, the, uh, the top five or top six 
um, school and apologetics, which that means that I can debate religions. From Wicca to all of that stuff. I got taught at a master's degree in that stuff. I don't use all that. I have a doctorate degree for oral robbers in theology and ministry. Wrote papers on the stuff. You think I use that stuff? Tried it and it don't work. When you got a person that's bound by spirits, they don't hear that. What the devil wants to do is try to try to navigate and distract me and whoever else over there to something that'll never work. You can't convince flesh. The Bible says he says that that this right. He said he says a carnal mind will never understand spiritual things, for they are foolishness to him. Neither are they spiritually discerned. Jesus had to open up mysteries to the kingdom. He, parables didn't do it. Jesus spoke in parables to hide mysteries, not to expose mysteries. You got it twisted. He didn't speak regular terms to make people understand. Jesus, that's why we need to understand the word. The word says that Jesus says, I spoke in mysteries so that guess what? Them hearing, they don't hear. Them seeing, they don't hear. And if they, because if they saw it, they'd be delivered. And so they, he, spoke, he said, but I speak plain to you. And so the world thinks Jesus used parables to make things understandable, but that's how twisted the, the devil, that's how you can tell you've been deceived by the devil. The, the, Jesus never used parables to make things simple. He made them parables to conceal a matter. That's why every time, if you read the Bible, that's why I keep telling you, read the Bible, read the Bible. So Jesus talked about the sower and the sower, and then every time now, the, the disciples the disciples had to pull them aside and say, what does that mean? And Jesus has given unto you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So I'll tell you, the sower sows the word. But he never spoke to people he didn't want to get it. He spoke to them in parables and mysteries. And so facts tell you that Jesus did that to relate to everybody. That's people who don't read the word. Truth tells you that Jesus spoke like that to conceal it from everybody. So that you can come and grieve your life to Christ, then that stuff be revealed to you. Because if it get revealed to you now unsaved, it will still work for you and it will set you back farther. Because no matter what, if the kingdom principles will work for a saved person and an unsaved person. If you sow into the ministry, you're going to still get a harvest. But God don't want your horse behind getting a harvest till you get your heart right. Because you're going to take the money out of the magic city and, huh? And spend your grocery money, your gas money, then your wife gonna want to beat your behind. And I'm gonna have to talk her down. Because <laughs> we got some women in here to set you straight, first lady included. <laughs> huh? You don't show with the uh, uh, you got paid and then hide for two days and come back home broke. <laughs> don't come calling me. <laughs> huh? Amen. You shall know the truth and the truth. And facts don't make you free. Facts put you in bond. Jesus meant, again, those parables to hide. As you are a Christian, one of your inheritance is to understand the mysteries of God and be able to benefit from them. He didn't mean for an unsaved person to benefit from that. So your first step, if you don't know Jesus Christ, instead of trying to go find out mysteries that you're never going to get because they are spiritually hidden now, go and get to God. The first, the, the, the number, the one thing that's not hidden now is your eternal life. If you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, hell awaits. Why? Not because you are evil, but because you rejected Jesus. The biggest lie the devil's tell you, you can live how you want to live. You can reject Jesus. You can have all this Eastern religion because that's smart because hip hop done sold all of that stuff. Russ Simmons and all them doing all that stuff. Even though black people have been delivered by Jesus out of the cotton field. Muhammad didn't do it. Uh, uh, Sikhism didn't do it. Your, your master, when they did it, Herod Tubman believed the word of God. And Turner, Nat Turner, all them, King did. And miracles happen. Mountains shook now. And then all of a sudden now, you free, talking about you burning saves with a nappy head, running around, talking about you a witch, and then you're a zodiac. Maniac. Negro act. No, 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 no. Negro act. Negro act. Calm down, kid. I got you. I don't want the frat on me. 
<laughs> Amen? Amen? Go back to the God of your grandmama. Go back to the God that put food on the table when you couldn't vote. Go back to the God that kept you, kept you alive when they wanted to hang you. Go back to the God that saved you when the whole nation was against you. Go back to the God now that armed you with a smartphone that showed the world that you weren't a liar. Go back to the God. You don't need an army. Your God never used an army to deliver you before. He used a 26-year-old man down there in Atlanta with a scuffed up shoes and a Bible to turn the world upside down. He used poor people now with a smartphone to set to, to, to shut people up now. He don't need an army. He needs you to have a mustard seed of faith. And your first step of faith is to, is to thank the God by Jesus Christ to save you. New Age didn't do it. You got that when you joined Black Lives Matter. And that was a good part of it, but then the bad part, you, get, you took the whole thing. Instead of them, you leading them, you, you went and let them run you. Now you walking around, wanting, I don't, I don't want to be a man. Now I'm twitching now. I don't want to say nothing about it because guess what now? Anything goes. You don't want to offend nobody now. But when you do it right, you're going to piss some people off. And hey, you don't care, and you don't care offend people. You don't care about offending white folks, but homosexuals you don't want to know because they're human. Everybody human, but they got problems. And it's killing us. Those demonic spirits are killing us. Killing us. Amen. So let's pray this prayer. Amen. You ready to pray it? Let's give our life to Christ. Let's forsake that witchcraft. And get, this ain't new. Guess what? And I'll tell you this right here. In the book of Romans, I believe, baby, they've got it to where they had magic was evil back then. They had, it was, there, was, there, there was a town that had repented from magic and witchcraft. Yeah, they put it in the Bible. And they, burnt, and they, they piled up their books and burned them. And they said that it would have built, the, the books that were burnt that day were worth $5 million. The Apostle Paul had them burn their spell and magic books and repent. This ain't new. And the prophet of God stripped their main sorcerer of his or her power and stripped her down and stripped that demon down to the point that the people who hired her were mad at Paul and wanted to stone him. The power of God is stronger than the devil. The Holy Spirit is stronger than witchcraft. It's stronger than a spell. He, the devil, the demons tremble at what I got. The demons tremble at the Holy Spirit. They're terrified. Jesus has defeated him on the cross. He defeated him in hell. You're worshiping devils that were defeated 2,000 years ago. Jesus even snatched the keys of death. I had a dream, what, two days ago. And I, <laughs> but this, I was in this dream, and I had some spiritual warfare, and this little, little spirit came in. It was like, looked like a man. He was sitting on the couch, crossed his legs. And I walked by and I said, who are you? He said, I'm death. I said, you come for me. And I looked at him and grabbed his head like, did you come for me? And I choked him up. And he still was arrogant. Arrogant. I looked him in his eye. They were all black. There was no pupil. He said, I'm deaf. And his head, his mouth, his, he had cavities in his mouth. And I remember just choking him up. I said, you don't understand. You were defeated 2,000. I looked at him. You were defeated 2,000 years ago. You ain't even have keys anymore. Get out of here. Amen. Jesus has snatched the keys to you, fool. Like somebody's supposed to be terrified of you. Like, I come for you, man, get out of here. <laughs> come, huh? come to get these hands. <laughs> Let the young people say that, amen? Exactly, exactly. You need to give your life to Christ, who has victory over death, hell, and the grave. Hmm? Witchcraft is not stronger. New age is not stronger. Sikhism is not stronger. All of that stuff you think is new was defeated in the flood, on the cross, and then the Apostle Paul came and delivered an entire town of what you think is new. The frequencies ain't new. That, they were burning because you don't read your Bible. The devil got you looking at facts, and if you read the Bible, you're like, oh, shoot. Hmm? It's easy to trick somebody that don't know the truth. Amen. Get your foundation here before you go out dippling in other stuff. You don't want to, I got to live holy. Yeah, everybody do. 
I can't be hoish with this. <laughs> I got to give. Yeah, everybody do. Jesus, get, for God so loved the world that he what, gave everything he had. You're stingy behind. <laughs> Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you as a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart, and I'll serve you all the days of my life. And Lord, I ask you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, look, if you prayed that prayer, let me tell you something. The blood is stronger than witchcraft, it's stronger than your past, it's stronger than alcohol, it's stronger than drugs, it's stronger than the Jezebel spirit, it's stronger than your past hurts and wounds, it's stronger than homosexuality, it can break all of that. And guess what? The facts of the day is saying that everything that you bound in that stuff and can't get out of it, it's, a, it's the devil lying to you so that you don't fight. And I have tried, guess what? You tried in the, in the flesh but not the spirit. <laughs> Let that demon come up with the uh, come up against the anointing and see what happens. If you really want out, let's get out. And again, the devil wants you to think you're the only one who got to fight stuff. There's people out there that want harems and can't get them. They want it. That's normal in places too. There's people out there that want to marry kids. Why do you think yours is normal and everybody else is disgusting? Everybody got to fight something. You ain't the only one got to fight a devil. I got, I got stuff to fight too. I don't try to legalize mine because I don't want to fight no more. God's going to, you're going to have to bow. Your arrogant mind going to have to bow. Your lifestyle going to have to bow. And because the reason why you still want that ultimate lifestyle is because you don't want to bow and give it to God. You're going to have to surrender. Everything you got is going to be here. It's got to go. You got to give it to God. Every knee shall bow. Your sex habit is going to have to bow. Your partnership is going to have to bow. And the world can clap all they want to because you got people that quit fighting because you think that the world this is going to pass away and you chose the claps of them over the cross. You're going to have to take up your cross. I can't, I, you give your life to Christ, I'm not going to tell you that you're going to have a perfect life. You're going to have, I'm going to promise you something, that you're going to have a cross that you're going to have to, that, huh, you're going to have to sacrifice. And this world has told you, I ain't got to let go of nothing. And if you tell me to let go of it, you wrong, not me. The devil is a liar. You're going to have to let go of something. You holding on to your sexuality like you have a right to it, and everybody else had to let go of something. You ain't the only one. The Bible littered with folks that forsook all of that and followed him and never went back. How dare you think that God going to come and, and, and he going to come where you are, but he pulling your, your, your stubborn behind where he wants you to be. You're trying to, like the devil did, you're trying to change heaven to your taste. Because you don't want to bow. I had to bow. My horse behind had to bow. My lion tongue had to bow. My bad check right self had to bow and cry and repent and say, Lord, I don't want my way. Let me die. So don't, if I, Jesus had to die and you looking around and your flesh running around and you act like you got a right to have your flesh and Jesus died. Just because America's written laws that say you can do it and they celebrate you and you don't have to do it. Christian says this right here is that guess what? You got to crawl. You're going to have to die and your flesh ain't going to want to do it. And what's happening is you keep agreeing with your flesh and you think everybody else should be agreeing with your flesh too. Because you got a cousin like that. I'm going to tell you what. When you compromise with stuff like that. They're going to like you now, but when they need prayer, they'll never come to you. Because whatever you compromise, whatever demon you compromise with, that demon has power over you. When you, when, you, when, you, when you conquer that demon and say, no, God gives you a ring of authority and say, now you have, you have jurisdiction over it. 
that every demon that you bow to and compromise to, he'll never respect you. And you're thinking that because you agree with your relatives and agree with society, I'm telling you now, they might hate me because when, they, when, when time comes for prayer, when time comes in their trouble, guess what they call? The same one they told off. Stop bending. You can't want justice and not righteousness. It don't work that way. God, justice for the black man and righteousness is the same thing. And black people these days want justice, but they want to be freaky too. And that's it's not working. How dare you uh, accuse the white man of anything and then you are kill you violating God at the same time. It don't work that way. You're a hypocrite when you can go and you can deliver, you, you can deny God, but then you want justice over here. God's throne, the Bible says God's throne has two things on it, justice and righteousness. You can't be a whoremonger marching for freedom. You can't have a sexual, you can't be a homosexual, and it and, and, and ain't a bad thing, I ain't saying you're an evil person, but you can't be, I, I'll say this, because that's all I'm saying, you can't be cheating on your wife. You can't be on the porno site. You can't be fornicating. Huh? Stabbing. So I'll put it all the same thing, and so I ain't singling nobody out, and you in sexual stuff like that, and then you over there marching talking about justice. I can't be cheating on Bonnie, doing all the other stuff, and then I'm over here preaching this stuff over here to you. Yeah, guess what? If you fall in it, get back up. I'm talking about you. I mean, I'm gonna have, I got it. Some of y'all got the girl. I, I, in Atlanta, you got your, you, you got your side chicken apartment. You paying her rent. And the wife can't get socks. But you over here with your fist out with justice, but you don't let it go the same way. And you, if you, you're going to mess around and keep praying for justice, and God going to give you some for violating that too. So when you pray for justice, you better, Dr. King said, and, I, and I, I, this is it, baby, really. In the letter of a broken ham jail, the first paragraph of that said, before he addresses injustice, he says, I did cleaning of myself. I did inner, inner reflection. I forgot the words he used, some kind of cleansing or something he did. Before he went and accused anybody of anything. Because we know that if you go around and demand justice, God ain't just going to give it. He's going <laughs> he to get some for him too. So you better make sure your life is right when you're out there crying out for justice. Because you might just get, he might get his justice too. Amen? Justice and righteousness. And when you're a new Christian, you want to bow before God. That's the first thing. You want to please God. It's supposed to be hard here. If you under good pastoral hearing, you should have some sermons that's hard to take. Don't mean I'm your enemy. That growth is stretching you. And you ain't the only one got to fight sex and all that other stuff. The Apostle Peter said, flee sexual lust and temptation. You got to flee. Everybody got to do it. It just manifested in a different way to you in, the, in America clapping so you think you hid behind the devil because he clapping for your behind. It's like a big party. Just come in and join in. Everybody's having fun. Now black folks is in it now. They all in that stuff now. We were never that. We were not like, we were more conservative. That's why in California when they had the same-sex marriage law, um, um, try to pass that, when Obama got elected, the reason why it got down because there were more black voters and we were not traditionally for that stuff. And we got marketed to it now, but we weren't that. Back then when Obama got elected in 2008, Guess what now? Because that was on the ballot in California, Proposition, what, 38 or so, was in there. It got struck down because black folks were traditional family people. And it got shut down there. But what happened now, we put it in our music and everywhere else. And then the devil got us thinking, the world under those who call evil good. The devil will give you an idea out of your own head and think it's you feeling that way. He'll give you feelings that ain't even yours. And because you've been agreeing with it so long, and I'm tired of being bound by the devil. And I don't care, even if it's my own sin, I want to fight it because I don't want nothing the devil got. 
I don't want the devil to give me nothing. I don't want nothing. I don't want a fr- I don't want nothing that hell got. Nothing. There's nothing the devil can offer me that I want. And you should be the same way. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving the Let's go ahead and pray and get the rest of it. I don't know why I'm there with that like that, but I feel that you need to hear that, people. I, I'm not condemning you. I'm telling you this right here. Is it every the world gonna say it because the devil telling you that the devil give the world their language. The devil tells you how to argue back with God's word. Because why? He ain't your friend. And he wants to see you in hell. So guess what? He's gonna agree with your flesh. The devil wanted Jesus to agree with his flesh and say, I ain't got to go to the cross. You're right. I ain't got to live holy. You're right. Jesus had to fight it too. And if that means you have to leave here, I don't want you to, but I'm going to want you're never going to go before God and say, I didn't tell you the truth. You have a choice to believe it or not. And you can go side with the world because it's easy. And how dare you, after all these Christians got beat, fed by lions, you don't want to uh, deny a sexual lifestyle. You had people getting fed by lions, turn, Neo, Nero burnt them on fire and use them as candles, and got lit, got killed, all that other stuff now. And you don't want to deny one thing, and everybody else said, and you want to deny Jesus over one thing, and other people stood up for Christ for a whole lot more and died for it. How dare you? I've lost relatives over standing for Christ. And it's an honor. Father, we thank you. We praise you for the day, Lord God. Father God, I thank you that this word came on ground. But Lord God, I know, Lord God, that your word, you even say, Lord God, if they don't believe the word preached, Lord God, that judgment comes out of it, Lord God. Lord, I ask you to tenderize their heart, Lord God. I bind the spirit of the world and the lust thereof, Lord God. For you said in your word, it's not of the Father, Lord God. Father God, well, forgive me for my sin, Lord God. I repent, Lord God, for anything I did, thought, committed, Lord God. I surrender to you, Lord God, for you are Lord and not my flesh, Lord God. Father God, for people who found this hard to, hard to digest, Lord God, because it's the first time they're hearing it, Lord God, or they are bombarded with the opinion of the world, I ask you to soften their heart, Lord God, and take me out of it, Lord God, and you minister to them your love, Lord God. We surrender to you for you are God, Lord God. I speak peace. I speak blessing on everyone here, Lord. And I activate the passion, the blessing of God in their life, Lord God. Father God, it sent, Lord God, send blessing and mercy and grace. You said by your love you draw them, Lord God. Send love and mercy. Now, a love ain't agreement, Lord God. Father God, send them people with a gentle voice that they might receive better, Lord God. I open up their ears and their heart to receive your word and blessing today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, look, look, look. This is your pastor. I love you. God loves you. Amen. Keep moving.